Okay, so this is the Rat Catcher's Daughter Year 8 vocabulary for the novel by Pamela Rushdie. So your basic goal for this is to do three separate things. Uh, we'll do these across the unit, but you're going to be learning how to spell them. You're going to be learning what they mean, so to actually understand them in context and to be able to apply them to a story or to be able to use them. Um, but for this little video, all you need to do is, in your copy of the novel, find these words, circle them, and write a definition. So you can do that in a lot of, di lot of different ways. You could just do sort of like a synonym, or you could do maybe a picture of whatever the thing is so that you can remember what it is. Or you could just write the full definition if you think it's complicated and you don't necessarily understand it. So for this one, I'm just going to really briefly take you through a quick definition of each of the words. If I'm going too fast, just pause the video and find the page and take the note on what words are the ones that we'll be looking at and write a little definition next to them. Alrighty, so first word, petticoat. A petticoat is sort of like an underskirt that you wear under a normal skirt. And the copper is what they used to wash clothing in at the time. Haberdashers is a place that sells men's clothing. Curtsy is to sort of bend at the knees and at the ankles and sort of almost plie your feet, sort of bend them outwards. And it's a very polite thing. Pinchback is just kind of like a cheap version of gold. Bacteriology is the study of bacteria. Serum is kind of a tricky one. It's sort of like the fluid that contains a drug usually. It's just kind of like quite an inert thing that doesn't really do much, but it carries other things. Miasma is sort of like bad energy or bad air. The word here is missing, but it's camphor, just there. And it's kind of like a tree, smell, scent. Genteel is kind of being rich, polite, organized. Refined is very similar to be sort of fancy, show-offy. And dunny is the opposite of that. It's a toilet. Chamber pots is basically just like a ceramic little bowl that you'd use before toilets were commonplace. Um, and in the middle of the night, you get up and you'd sort of do your business in those. Purses are vehicles that you carry coffees in. Economical is to be sort of thrifty or to be not wasteful with the things that you have. Swanstown is basically just a fabric. Paul is a little cloth that you put over a coffin. Solemn is sort of a, it's an adjective to describe a mood and a solemn mood is kind of quite serious, quite sad and quite thoughtful. Memento mori is sort of like uh, people used to have paintings or pictures or actual items of like a skull or something that showed death in it so they to remind themselves that they too would die kind of like as a wake-up call or a refresher. Morbid is this basically dealing with death or other gross stuff. Likeness, something that looks the same or is the same. Corned beef is gross meat that they ate at the time. It's, I guess it's alright now, but back then it would have been probably a little bit more suspect. Necropolis is a cemetery, especially a really big one. Influenza is just another disease that had a similar effect to the plague. Not a similar effect, but was similarly widespread. A boil is sort of the gross little things that appear all over people, or they're called vuvos as well. A veranda goes around a house, and it's kind of a awning or a covering. Wilt is to sort of a plant to go a little bit floppy and a little bit weak. Summons is either a court order or something that tells you to go somewhere. Exasperated is when you're sort of at the end of your tether and you're over. Shepherded is kind of to be like a shepherd, to sort of push people in a certain direction. Wavered is to be unsure about something. Cordoned is to sort of put a line around or to block off. Affronted is to be shocked, a little bit surprised by something. Overseer is sort of the person at the top of a pyramid with a whip, someone organising work like that. A matron is someone, usually a middle-aged or elderly woman in charge of something. Apprehensively is to do something whilst thinking that perhaps it's not the best approach. Antiseptic is something that's clear from disease. Partitioned 
is kind of to put little blockades or walls around things. So to partition something off is to kind of separate it. Consolation is when you've already lost. It's like a small thing to say, you know, you did okay, kind of like a consolation prize is what you get when you didn't win, but you get sort of something small. Inoculate is to be vaccinated for something, so to be protected from it by getting a different version of the disease, usually in one that doesn't actually cause the disease. Hale, Hale and Hardy always go together, and it just basically means like young, healthy, fit sort of thing. Mangroves are sort of an area, kind of like a swamp with little trees in it and vines and that sort of thing. Carbolic is just a type of soap. Rickety is something that's about to fall down. All right, lots all together. Lancing is to lance something. So a lance is kind of a long thing that knights use to knock each other off. And in this case, it's lancing. Basically, it's just a similar shaped object to stab things with. Insomnia means you can't sleep. Delirium is when you're almost drunk due to being uh, malnourished or it could be from a whole number of things, but kind of to be a bit floppy and a bit out of your brain. Strike nine is apparently something poisonous. Like it sounds to me like something that you would put to kill off plants or something like that. Eminent is someone respected and venerable, someone very well respected in that sort of field. Clamoring is a loud noise. Uh, grievance is an issue that you have with someone. Stroppy is a nice clever word to describe someone who's very negative and kind of at the end of their tether. Quarantine is a place where you put people so they don't share their disease with others. Chard is like a tree that's blackened or anything else that's been burned. Disheartened is someone who's lost hope or faith in something. Sober is to be free from alcohol or just normal, I guess most people would call it. Um, most people spend most of their life sober. Epidemic is a disease that's been really widespread and mince is uh, basically to crush up or to mix Vigilance is the state of being ready and aware. Exterminating is killing something off or clearing it. Constitution uh, is, has a legal sense, but in this sense it just means sort of strength of body, kind of toughness, um, health, those sort of things. Patronizing can be a good thing, but in this case it means to talk down to someone else. And in that case the person would be seen as inferior, and then the third world is condescending, which is not here for some reason. And that means more or less the same thing. So in this case, the doctor is talking down. Calico is just a fabric type. Serviceable is something that does its job, but not amazingly. Gratitude is being thankful for what you have or what someone has given you. Autopsy is when you cut open a body and see what the person died from. So you can't do an autopsy on someone who's alive. Errand is just a small job, so I might say, you know, go to the shop and get me some milk. That would be an errand. Hastily is to do something very quickly. Pamphlets is a little piece of information that people that people use mostly for, like, you know, travel, those sort of things. Nonchalantly is to do something in a chill way. Nuisance is something that's annoying or bothersome. Meek is someone who is, uh, like, shy. Very shy, extremely shy, I would say. Morbid is to talk about death. Quick lime is a type of lime. Basically, you get lime, you heat it up, and you get something called quick lime. Habitation is a place where someone lives. Demurely is sort of politely and without shame. Enthusiastically is to be really enthusiastic or excited about something. Swishing is a sound that a skirt, skirt makes when it rubs against each other, and it's an example of onomatopoeia. Distraughtly is to be distraught about something, or to behave in a way that is distraught. Envious is to look up to something or someone. Mutton is a sheep used for food. Um, it's not a very common meat anymore, but at the time it was very popular. Tinge is sort of to put a slightly different colour into something. A symptom is a sign of a disease. Complications are things that occur after an initial infection. So if you had the plague, a complication could be another disease that comes with it. 
Dismay is to sort of be at your wit's end again, to be sort of surprised or out of ideas. Loathed is something that is hated. Detested is also something that is hated. Observant is someone that is always watching and they're aware of what is going on. A premises is just a house, often owned by someone. Bales are kind of like little packages of things, usually fabric or hay or something soft. A twitch is something that is shaking or twitching. Quivering is very similar, something that is quivering is sort of shaking subtly. Fritter is to sort of store away or to waste something, kind of use it in very small amounts, is to fritter. Far away is something that's away far. Nausea is sort of feeling sick, like you might throw up. Awkward is um, something that makes people feel uncomfortable or doesn't fit especially. Bustling is like a busy shopping mall where people, there's a lot of movement in it. Matic is kind of like a little pick thing that you dig the ground up. Reassurance is when someone assures some, someone of something again. Vial is basically the little glass thing that you put an injection in to draw things out of. And administered is the process of giving something to someone, usually a nurse or a doctor to a patient. Barricaded is to be blocked in with a barricade. Incredulous is to be shocked or unsure. Racket is basically a tennis racket, be it square or round. Proprietor is the owner of a shop. So you're with a little apron on, that sort of thing. Uh, okay, last two words, not from the novel. Onomatopoeia is sound effects, like bam, crash, those sort of things. And foreshadowing is to say something that hasn't happened yet. So you might say, I didn't yet know that I was going to die. So you're alluding to something that will happen in the future because of course you're writing a story.